So at the top of 9.4 notes, you see these pyramids. Go ahead and fill in S, C, and T. S, C, T. This is just another illustration of how to remember Sokotoa. Um, what does S stand for in Sokotoa? Sign, right? So sign is so. How do we spell so? S-O-H. So go ahead and put O-H. Because what you're going to do is put the opposite over the hypotenuse. The opposite side over the hypotenuse side. Then we have C. What does C stand for? Cosine. All right? It's okay. Um, and cosine, so ka. How do we spell ka? C-A-H. Okay, so A in the numerator, which is adjacent, and then H in the denominator, which is the hypotenuse. And then what does T stand for? Tangent. So ka toa. How do we spell toa? Opposite over adjacent toa. Um, o over A. So today we're going to do tangent. Um, tomorrow we're going to talk about sine and cosine. Essentially our goal today, we're going to learn how to find side lengths using tangent. Um, but mostly our goal is also just to get comfortable with your calculator and learn how to type things in. So before we dive in to 9.4, we're going to review a little bit of yesterday. Okay, so on that worksheet, this worksheet, um, number one, we'll start. We're going to find tangent from Z. So go ahead and mark that we're looking into the triangle from Z. Um, so tangent, obviously we have so, ka, Toa, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Um, so we're going to label all the sides. We're just going to do all of them. Which of these is the hypotenuse? 35. 35. Which of these is opposite? 21. Which of these is adjacent? 28. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So what's going to go in my numerator? 21. And in my denominator? 28. We do believe in reducing. So what is 21 and 28 both divisible by? 7. That reduces to 3 over 4. So technically, this is your whole answer. Tangent of z equals 3 over 4. What does z represent? An angle. We don't know the angle. We would eventually find the angle. Number 2 is cosine from angle c. So cosine is ka. Adjacent over the hypotenuse. Which of these is the hypotenuse? 34. Which of these is opposite? 30. And then 16 is adjacent. So what goes in the numerator? And in the denominator? 34. What does this reduce to? 8 over 17. And then last, that we're going to do together at least, sine from C. Sine is so, so opposite over hypotenuse. Which of these is the hypotenuse? 35. Which of these is the opposite? 28, which means 21 is adjacent. So what goes in the numerator? 28. In the denominator? 35. What are they both divisible by? 7. So we get 4 over 5. Okay, we're going to flip to the back side and answer some of those as review. The difference between the front and the back is the back says find the value of each trig ratio to the nearest ten thousandth. So how many zeros are there in ten thousand? Four. So we go four decimal places. Okay. So cosine of z. So cosine is ka adjacent over hypotenuse. So from z... Which of these is the hypotenuse? 15. And which of these is opposite? 9. And then adjacent is 12. So we're going to end up with 12 over 15. You can reduce it if you want. But our answer is going to look like a decimal, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to reduce. Hey, you're going to get the same answer. So what is 12 over 15 um, as a decimal? It's 0.8.
It's not three-fourths, yeah. It's okay. I said that in first hour as well. Point A, N. I'm, we're going to put three zeros behind, really only for your future self to look back and remember you're going to round to four decimal places. The last one we'll do together is tangent from C. So go ahead and mark. We're looking in from C. Remember that TOA is opposite over adjacent. So which of these is the opposite? 40. Which one's the hypotenuse? So that means the adjacent is 30. So what will go in the numerator? 40. And then the denominator? 30. So let's go ahead and type that in. We're going to round to four decimal places. Oh. If you don't know how to with your calculator, you can. You're scientific. Type in 40 over 30. And then you hit S to D, which is above the delete button, if you have a Casio. Mm -hmm. Yours already does it. Theirs reduces it for them. So yours is just a different Casio. Yeah. So yours won't do fractions. So yours is going to be a little harder to use than ours. Mm -hmm. You get 1.3 repeating. So you're going to stop after the fourth. It doesn't round up. It's just 1.3 through 3. Um, while you're here on the back page, you're going to go ahead and cross out 19 through 24. I forgot to know those. Tonight's homework is to finish this paper. But 19 through 24, you do not have to do. So just the normal questions. Questions about this. Beautiful. Go ahead and put it to the side. We're going to go back to our notes and learn some tangent. Okay, so trigonometry is the study of triangles. So you're going to write that. Where is this trigonometry? Study of triangles. In specific, the first six sections in chapter 9 are about a specific type of triangle. What okay. kind? The right triangle. Um, so we learned about, first, a Pythagorean theorem, right? What was the Pythagorean theorem? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So what did we plug in to the Pythagorean theorem? Sides. Um, so in this section, you're going to need to know when to use the Pythagorean theorem and when to use a trig ratio. And it's very, very simple. The Pythagorean theorem only works for sides. You will never plug in an angle. You will never find an angle. It is just if you have... Two sides of a right triangle, and you need to find the third. That is the Pythagorean theorem. There are other situations you will be in, like today's, where you cannot use the Pythagorean theorem. So you see, 35 is an angle. Can I plug an angle into the Pythagorean theorem? Never. So that's why we have trig ratios. So you have three situations on the front page of 9.4. I'm going to show you all of them, um, and we'll go from there. So if you are given two sides and you're missing one side, so you're given two sides and you have one side that is missing, what will you use? The Pythagorean theorem. Right? We just, we just talked about that. The Pythagorean theorem. So that's when you're only dealing with sides. Okay? Because A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A, B, and C are sides. <clears throat> I'm going to give you a hint. The remaining two are you're going to use trig ratios because we're going to be dealing with angles. So scenario two is what we're going to be in today. All right? And that is when you're given a side and an angle. So when you're given one side and one angle and you have a side missing. So one side and one angle given. One side missing. You're going to use a trig ratio, either sine, cosine, or tangent. Okay? This is what is on the quiz on Friday. It's on the test next week. Um, the last situation we won't learn until next Thursday. Okay, so if you're given a side and an angle, kind of like what I showed you on the screen just before this. Um, the last situation, like I said, we're going to learn next week, but if you are given two sides and you want to find an angle, 
or all of the angles. So if you're given sides and you want to find an angle, will the Pythagorean theorem help you find an angle? Mm -hmm. It will not. So you have to use a trig ratio, either sine, cosine, or tangent. So that one we learn next week. There's a blank at the bottom that says blank triangles only. What kind of triangles do these work for? Mm -hmm. Right triangles. Good. Right triangles. In 9.7, we talk about non-right triangles, and we'll get there when we get there. But the rest of the chapter is right triangles. So we're going to talk only about tangent today. So the way that your book does this, um, I actually renamed 9.2, and we kind of did our own thing because in previous years, I've seen that students do a lot better learning Sokotella first, and then we do tangent, and then we do sine and cosine. So your book is going to teach it as if you have never heard of Sokotoa before. But you have, and we're going to focus on tangent, which is Toa. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is review. This is my review. And then the examples that we go into are from your textbook. It says, find all the trig functions. Don't let this word scare you. It's the same as, like, asking for the ratios. From the smallest acute angle. I am telling you one of the four questions on your quiz tomorrow. Actually, I think two of them. I think two of them are worded like this, from the smallest acute angle. So before we start, do we have all the information we need to find sine, cosine, and tangent of this triangle? We do not. We are missing a side. And we know two sides. So how do we find the third side if we know two sides? <laughs> Correct. The Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Which of these is C? 29. So we're going to do 20 squared and x squared. What is 20 squared? 400 plus x squared. You do have a square button on the scientific calculator. You won't be using it for tomorrow's quiz, just so you know. You still need to know how to square like normal. But there is a square button if you choose to use it today. What is 29 squared? 841. Subtract 400, x squared equals 441, take the square root, and that missing side is 21. So we especially needed to know this before we started, because we need to do sine, cosine, and tangent from the smallest acute angle. What is the shortest side? 20. So what angle is the smallest angle? A. So go ahead and mark that we're looking into the triangle from A because that is the smallest acute angle. It's crossing the shortest side. So we're going to find sine, cosine, and tangent. What do I have to write after all three of those? Sine, cosine, and tangent. And A. This is not me being picky. I just need you to understand. Type in your calculator. Find the sine button. When you type in the sign button, what comes in directly after it? Half of a parenthesis. Half of a parenthesis. Guess what you plug in right there? An angle. Okay? Right now, A, we don't know angle A, so that's why we're writing like this. Uh, but sine, cosine, and tangent are ratios of angles. So they need to know what angle you're talking about. If you don't have an angle there, it does not make sense, and it will actually take your previous answer and do sine or cosine of that angle. Anyways. Sine of angle A. Let's talk about our triangle here. Which of these is the hypotenuse? 29. Let's go ahead and label it. Which of these is opposite of angle A? 20. And then adjacent is 21. So we'll do so first. Sine is so. So what is going to go in the numerator? Opposite, which is 20. And then the hypotenuse, which is? 29, bless you. So that's so, ka, what will go in the numerator? Adjacent, which is 21, and then the hypotenuse, which is 29. So, ka, toa, so opposite will go in the numerator, which is, and then adjacent will go in the denominator, which is 21. You'll go ahead and box it in. Please ensure that your answer looks exactly like mine. It says angle A, 
it's an equation with an equal sign or it's literally just mumbo jumbo. Everyone's looks like this. Beautiful news. I saw a lot of different things when I walked around in the afternoon yesterday. So just make sure um, you're following. Um, but you're gonna, I, I would say the first two are literally this, like, like this. And they're worded like this, from the smallest acute angle. Okay? All right, so like I said, your textbook is going to act like you've never learned this. So we're going to talk about the tangent ratios. And we're going to find tangent of S and then tangent from angle R. We're going to write each answer as a fraction and a decimal rounded to four places. So we're going to start with tangent from S. So it doesn't want the other ones. It just wants tangent from S. <clears throat> so from S, tangent is TOA out of SOCA TOA. So we, know, we need the opposite and the adjacent. So what is opposite of S? 80. 80. And then which is adjacent? 18. 18, because 82 is your hypotenuse. So what will go in the numerator? 80 over 18. So I write it over here because they're both even. They can be reduced. What is 80 over 18 reduced to? 40 over 9. So it says write your answer as a fraction and a decimal rounded to four places. So again, type in 40 over 9, and then you hit S to D, and it'll make it a decimal for you. It says four places, but I don't think it goes, or no, it does. It's repeating. So this will be 4.4444. 4, 4, 4. You don't have to hit the fraction button, just so you know. You can just type in 40 divided by 9, and that'll work too. Okay, that's tangent from S. Tangent from R. Tangent from R. So from R, what's the opposite? 18. 18. And then what's the adjacent? 80. So, because the hypotenuse will never change, right? So it's just going to be the opposite and adjacent that change. So this time for R, opposite is... 18, adjacent is 80. Again, what does that reduce to? 9 over 40. We're going to go ahead and write that as a decimal to four places. So what do we get? 0.225. You can put a zero at the end. It technically isn't wrong if you don't. Um, but on your homework, it definitely says to the ten thousandths. So make sure you know to four decimal places. Go ahead. Yes, ma'am. So this, that you're for. no, because this should be an equation. You see how I circled all of it? Sure. It's an equation. So like this would help you solve for angle S, and this would help you solve for angle R, because it's an equation, and I'll teach you eventually two buttons to type in to find angle R. So the numbers aren't just the answer. It's the whole thing. Good question. So now we learn how to use it. Why are we doing this? That kind of thing. So on this page, we're going to find the value of x and then round your answer to the nearest tenth. We're actually going to do this one first because it's easier, and then we'll do the other one. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Can we use the Pythagorean theorem? No. It's got an angle. It won't help us find a side here. So the first thing you need to know, you're going to use a trig ratio. In order to know which trig ratio in the future, obviously today is called tangent, but what you're going to do is you're going to label your given sides from your given angle. And I'll explain what that means. You're going to label the given sides from the given angle. What have we been labeling all of the sides in these right triangles? Opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay, so let's do that on this first one. What is the given angle? So I, I told you we're going to do this one first because it's easier. Uh, what is the given angle? 56. So from 56, we're going to label the sides that we know. Okay, so X. What kind of side is X? Opposite. And what kind of side is 13? Adjacent. 
So technically step two, so this section you obviously know, step two is you use the trig ratio for those sides. So tomorrow we learn about sine and cosine, and you'll have already learned about tangent. So tomorrow, obviously and beyond, you'll need to figure out, oh, I have opposite and hypotenuse, that's sine. Oh, I have adjacent and hypotenuse, that's cosine. But today, obviously, we have opposite and adjacent. So which trig ratio deals with those two sides? Tangent, right? So what you're going to do, last step, is set up a trig, set up the trig ratio. So we chose as tangent for sure, so we're going to set it up. Tangent, so normally we write a letter because we don't know the measure of that angle. Do we know the measure of our angle? Yeah. We do. It is 56. Tangent from 56 degrees is equal to, you always put the opposite over the adjacent. So what will go in the numerator? X because that's the opposite, and then what goes in the denominator? 13. From here, now it is an algebra problem. Because think if you had 56 equals x over 13, like, and you didn't have tangent there, you know. It's the same idea. It's just tangent of 56 is important. So what, would, what are we going to do to solve for x? Multiply both sides by 13. This will cancel out the denominator, and we'll only have x. So, you'll pick up your calculator. If you have your own calculator from home, you want to make sure it says uh, the letter D at the top. It means degree. If it does not, then you might be in radians. Yes, it there. So, it needs to be somewhere on the screen. It'll say D. Um, but anyways, you're going to type in exactly as you see this. So, 13 first. You can put a parenthesis. You can just put 13. And then times. So, 13 times, yeah. 13 times, and then tangent of 56. 13 times, tangent of 56. And then you can enter. We're going to round to the nearest 10th, like the directions say. How many zeros does a 10 have? One, so you go one place. So what did we get as x? 19.3. Because 2, 7. Um, did anybody not get this in their calculator? You have to speak now or forever hold your peace. Okay? So that's the process every time. You're going to label the sides. You're going to choose a trig ratio. Set up the trig ratio. Okay? We're just going to practice with tangent today. So <clears throat> we're going to do this one. I said it was harder. You'll see why here in a second. First thing we're going to do is label the sides from the given angle. So from 61 degrees, what kind of sides do we have? We have 22 and x. What kind of side is 22? Opposite. Opposite. And then what kind of side is x? Adjacent. So step two, you would pick a trig ratio. Which trig ratio deals with these two? Tangent. From what angle? 61. And then it's always opposite over adjacent. So what will go in the numerator? 22 is the opposite. And then x is adjacent. This is where if you have a different calculator, it's going to be harder. The Casio is really easy. Um, but a lot of people look at this and they're like, oh, I'll just multiply times 22. Uh, that's not going to help. That's going to make this number bigger and not actually cancel out your denominator. So that's not a thing. Uh, but do you firmly believe that what you do to one side, you're allowed to do to the other? Mm -hmm. I firmly believe it. Okay? So let's talk about what is invisibly under any number under the sun. Mm -hmm. One. Tangent of 61 is a number. If you typed it in, it makes a decimal. It's a ratio. It's a fraction type thing. Um, so you can put it under one. So I don't want... 22 in the numerator. I want it in the denominator. So I'm going to flip the right side. But if I flip the right side, 
I have to flip the left side. So I'm going to put 1 over tangent of 61. Is everyone okay with why we did it? Okay, now 22 is on the bottom, right? So x is being divided by 22. What is the opposite of dividing by 22? Multiplying by 22. So on both sides, multiply by 22. If you have a Casio, you're going to type in 22 times. Do you have a fraction button? You do not. Um, once you hit the fraction button, write tangent of 61, and then stop what you're doing. So 22 times, and then just fraction, 1 over tangent of 61. So the problem is when you type in tangent, I'll tell you how to do it in your calculator in a second. When you type in tangent, you see how it opened up a parenthesis? It is not going to like it if you do not close the parenthesis when it's in a fraction. You have to close it if it's in a fraction. If you do not, it will say user error. And I cannot tell you how many times during a quiz or a test a student raised their hand to me because they didn't listen or didn't try. I don't know. And then they were like, Ms. Marshall, it says user error. My calculator is broken. Your calculator is a machine. It is not broken. It is a it's a computer, essentially. So you got to make sure you close that parenthesis or it will tell you error, and then you'll be confused. So close the parenthesis, hit enter, and then that will be your answer. If you do not have a scientific calculator, it is a little different. You have to type in 22 times, oh, sorry, yes, times, yes, times, parenthesis, 1 divided by tangent, and it'll have parentheses. 61. But notice that you have two open parentheses. You got this one that you have to close, and then you have this one that you have to close. So hopefully you can see my green. So if you don't have the Casio and you don't have a fraction button, that's. This is saying 1 divided by tangent of 61. And you should get the same answer. But either way you did it, which answer did we get? 12.2. Did every single person get 12.2? Did you not get 12.2? Okay, hit up. Um, that's because you did tangent over 1 instead of 1 over tangent. Oh. Okay. So now we do one more, and then you're going to practice on your whiteboards. Okay? So this is modeling with mathematics. Um, someone was like, why don't they just measure it with a, you know. Um, so there are a lot of things that they use trigonometry for. We're obviously using it to measure a, a lamppost that you probably could have measured on your own. Um, but essentially, if you've ever seen, like, on the side of the road, um, men with, like, an orange tripod. You ever seen it? Those are surveyors. Um, there are so many jobs you use trigonometry for, but just an example of one. Um, they use that to figure out the angle of elevation, which is the angle upward, angle of depression, which is the angle downward. Um, they use it to measure, like, the height of a tree without having to go over and measure the height of a hundred and some tall tree, right? Um, so, yes, in real life, you would probably measure this lamppost on your own, but I'm just letting you know that there are reasons why we use trigonometry, and it would be easier to use than just whipping out a tape measure in. That makes sense? So, you're measuring the height of a lamppost. You stand 40 inches from the base of the lamppost. So the base is at the bottom, right? So essentially that means you're over here if you wanted to understand. Um, you measure the angle of elevation. So like I said, angle of elevation is an angle that goes upward. So you could find the angle of elevation from your eyes to the top of a cabinet. You could find it from you to like an airplane and things like that. Um, they have devices to help with that. We probably couldn't do it with just a, a compass or a protractor. Um, and then that's 70 degrees. Find the height of the lamppost to the nearest inch. The nearest inch means a hole inch. So keep that in mind when we're answering this question. So we have a right triangle. We're going to follow the same steps. So from the angle we're given, we're going to label our sides. What kind of side is H? 
opposite. And then what kind of side is 40? Adjacent. So which trig function are we going to use? Tangent. From what angle? From 70 degrees equals the opposite over the adjacent. So a lot of people ask, how do I know what goes in the numerator? It is always the opposite over the adjacent. So what's going to go in the numerator here? H, and then in the denominator, 40. Do I need to flip this one? I do not. 40 is on the bottom. H is being divided by 40. The opposite of that is multiplying times 40. So 40 times tangent of 70. You type it in exactly as you see it. There's no fraction. 40 times tangent of 70. So remember to the nearest whole inch. I believe you get 109.89. So what does that round to? 109.9. 100, hold it, whole inch. So 110 inches. They wanted us to round to the nearest hole. 110 inches. Which is like 9 feet and change. So technically you could have taken a tape measure, but there are harder problems in life. All right. You're going to take out your whiteboard and your whiteboard marker. And we're going to practice. If I say yes to your answer, then you are allowed to go to the homework. But if you haven't answered me yet, you need to make sure you're answering on the whiteboard first because I need to know if you understand how to do this. Tomorrow we're going to do sine and cosine, and it only gets, you know, harder because we're doing more. It's the same process, just more options to use. So find value of x. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. I'll write it down for you to remember. We're going to round to the nearest tenth. Answer is my birthday. That's good. So you're gonna do opposite over adjacent. Answer was 7.7. .7. Here is your next one. Again, round to the nearest tenth. Uh, this was written wrong. Because this wasn't opposite of 22. X was opposite. If you got the age of a young person, it's correct. If you got an age of an older person, um, <laughs> let me know. So, also, see, 
Just check with you too. Can I see what you're checking? Oh, it's a 65. Yeah, that's all. Like it was close, but it's not. Wait, 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 stop, stop, stop. Stop erasing, I want to help you. Come on. Like, I'm trying to help you. Okay, right tangent of 65. the opposite over the adjacent. So what's the opposite of 65? So this 29 over the adjacent, which is that's the answer. Yeah, let's put x down. Right, is x there? Alright, I can't just multiply by 29. I'm going to put this over 1 and flip it. So you get 13 and a half. Yep. All right, come back to me. Work on this one. So again, make sure you're figuring out what, what the sides are labeled, because tomorrow we're going to have all the trig ratios, and we'll have to figure out all of them. Sorry. Wait, how come you can't use 90? Because what's opposite of 90? The hypotenuse. So then, like, you know, also if you typed in... Sine of 90 is 1. Cosine of 90 is 0. Those are, they're not going to, yeah, that's all good. Good question. Tangent of 90. Yes. Yeah, tangent of 90 is more good. 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 So opposite over adjacent. Yep, and then do you need to flip it? This is also the age of a young person. You might not think they're young, but I do. That's good. So you should get 22.6. All right, here's another. You should type one. Mm -hmm. You should type what you had. Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Okay, we'll use this one and then I'll.
Alright, so 15 is in the middle. Really. Mm -hmm. You're trying to do it in your head? Oh, okay. As long as you go through your head, it's good. It's good. And in your character. It's good. Did you get it, Kalani? I don't remember. 17.9? Good. 17.9. Point five X. Right from your sense. We should be getting pretty confident, yes? Yes. I So this one you don't have to flip because the when you multiply by ten it'll cancel this out. So you don't flip it at all, you just type that in. That's good. That's good. Good. So you should end up with twenty one point four. Twenty one point four. This one says find the exact answer. Your calculator is going to tell you an exact answer. Do not hit S to D. Just do it as the answer. I don't know how the other calculators will tell you the answer. I think yours will give you a decimal. You do the same thing like normal. Pardon me? You do the same thing as usual? It's just going to tell you a radical answer or not. I don't remember. Well, it might not be radical. When it says exact, that means you could have a radical. If you have a radical, leave it like one. This one is not radical. So there are two special right triangles. One of them is 45, 45, 90. And then one of them is 30, 60, 90. So you should have gotten a special number. If you think that it's a weird number, it's the right number. Or tangents the next one. Alright, let's think about this one for a second. So this one we should not have to type in. You ready? If this angle is 45, what's the measure of this angle? 45, because 45 plus 45 is 90. So remember back into chapter 5. If we had all congruent sides, what did we know about the angles? We had all congruent angles. If we have two congruent angles, we have two congruent sides. So the sides that will be congruent are opposite of the angles that are congruent. So what is x going to be? Nine. Nine, because these will be the congruent sides. So if you see 45, 45, 90, the two, the opposite and the adjacent will be the same. The hypotenuse will not, because it'll be the bigger side. But I think we have one more. I think this is it. And then we are finished.
Alright, so you should get 64.0, and then there's like a one after it. Okay. 